Um, hi, my name is Malakai. I'm an animator and I've been animating professionally for four years now. What made you so creative and channel that into animation? Um, what made me creative uh, to channel that into? So, so uh, as a kid, I didn't have like many toys or whatnot. We weren't as we weren't we weren't that wealthy when I was young, but I didn't. Uh, you don't notice that when you're younger. That just happens to be your your like your reality, what your world is, right? So one of the first things that I was doing that helped, not helped, but one of the first ways that I was would express my creativity was I would make. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it. So I would I would cut out like like limbs and bodies of characters and attach them together with like. Uh, with with a uh, split pins so that you can move the limbs it was kind of like playing with puppets and i used to do this on the floor and make a whole bunch of characters and build a whole narrative and stuff um so in a way that was technically the first time i had done anything to do with animation in a way because it's kind of like stop motion and then from there it went on to like i would make like models out of newspaper like i'd get newspaper and scrunch it together and wrap it around with with like sellotape to like build um, to, to like build characters and at the time I had done that with like uh, the first uh, with, with like Pokemon and stuff um, and then from there I guess just the, just the making making things to do that are fun being creative with it just kind of continued so uh, just growing up and like getting a computer and things like that that kind of way of of using my time in a way to make it fun just segued into uh, using computers now as well and with cartoons and stuff and then obviously that's when it led to animation eventually so yeah anyway how did you start in the industry uh, so how did I start in the industry uh, I kind of mm, I feel like I didn't directly begin my 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 work with animating for people in the industry so it was like I started doing animation for a friend who had loads of connections to famous people and he wanted to start an animation company and um or just an entertainment company in general or like a media company and we had some decent gigs at the beginning and that was that was one of the um things that really helped me to put like my first kind of show reel together um so that yeah that's how i got into it and then just continue from there okay so once you met up with your friend i mean when did you start to believe that you can actually make a career out of this and was there any situation before where you felt like this sort of industry wasn't for you so i always thought that i could make a career out of it i mean during university so i studied animation in university but it was it, at first what i believed i was applying for was a 2d animation course <laughs> But quickly, by the by the time I was finished, it became more or less just three D. So, but um, they they obviously had to keep up with what was popular and efficient at the time. What what the kind of um, what was running at the time. But um, because of that, I didn't think that I had at the time. I didn't feel like I had much chance to get into um, the industry for two D animation. And I didn't really believe in myself at the time because I hadn't done a lot of work that really, really mirrored what was out there and what was popular, you know? But um, uh, after a while doing some work with my friend and doing my own work as well, like making animation to entertain myself or just coming up with stories to entertain myself as well and music that goes along with it, like soundtracks and stuff, um, uh, I started to do uh, research. I just started to look on um, Google and find like different websites where you can actually find um, animation uh, jobs to like work either uh, like the pay would be per project or per day or um, or you could negotiate or whatever and I used to I, I began to find a bunch of those and that's when I started to f uh, believe that oh wow I can actually do this for um, for a living and leave my job because at the time I left university and kind of went straight into a day job so I lost a lot of my inspiration at that point. It was it was just normal life, innit? It was a bit miserable, but also very, very good. I learned a lot at the time. But um, when when I just started to do my own research and see how 
what ways are 2D animators making money from this. Um, I kind of, I, I realized that I didn't have to just look at TV and like The Simpsons <laughs> because um, people are doing it normally and especially with the explosion of it in this digital age in it and with the internet. So it became quite an easy thing to find if you were willing to put the time into getting better at it. With that said, do you, do you have a marketing strategy now to try and get more clients or, you know, how, how do you yeah. operate now? Okay, so, um, uh, so one of my, I don't know if I can call it a marketing strategy, but one of the things that I used to do and still kind of do, not as much, is, um, is if there is a job that you want, um, and let's say your competition is other people who are also after that job. I don't feel like I should be saying this now because this is going to make things worse for me <laughs> as well. But like, um, if you have the time um, and you ha and you have the the um, just the, the the direction to do it at the time, start the job. Start doing the job that you're applying for and send them a little piece. That's what I always used to do. And that's what used to help me get a lot of the work that I was doing. Um, because not only are you selling yourself with the work that you've already done and your showreel, but if you apply, if you're applying for, if you're pitching for, uh, for a job and you send them a little piece, then it's like, okay, they can see what it might look like. It instantly puts you ahead of the competition. So that's, that's probably the, that's probably the single, um, most beneficial thing that I did and still do occasionally but I don't need to do it as much because of all the work and clients I got under my belt but that's one thing I did at the beginning when I was more of an underdog. So I saw on your website you had an end client such as Bentley, Chelsea Football Club, NatWest and Under Armour. How did you get the opportunity to work with those customers? Cool so uh, the majority of the work that I get is through agencies or through other studios. The, the the majority of the time, the studios have the direct contact with these companies and with their 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 like their like marketing team or their media team or whatever. And then I will I will get the work from them and then we will work together on it. Sometimes uh, sometimes I've approached them directly, but you need to find out who to email or who to show example work for. Or again, like I said before, just put together something that they would likely use and let them see that. Because um, uh, it's like, if, if to, to find work, it's to find work with animation, in my opinion, it's good to help them understand what it is that your vision is by just showing them what it is in, in, in plain sight. Okay, so obviously you've, you've just named, um, I mean, we've just named Bentley, Chelsea Football Club, NatWest. These are big, big, well-established companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say is the massive difference or what is it really like working with such um, established companies um honestly i would say the, the way that i do it um freelancing it's it's not as it's not as prestigiously frightening as it might seem because there's some huge company uh how can i put it um the, the work that you might do for your course or the work that you might do for yourself might turn out to be more strenuous than the work that you're doing for some of these companies, simply because if you're doing something for yourself, let's say you're animating your own series or whatnot, there's a lot more you have to think about and a lot more responsibilities, responsibilities you have compared to doing something for a company, especially if it's like a one, two minute video. Um, uh, I suppose the key points that you, you should definitely it goes for any job, but be reliable. <laughs> One thing, be reliable. Um, know that when you estimate how long something will take to be done, unless you've taken deliberate steps to be very aware of how long it takes you to do something, always try to... Um, what's, what's, the, what's the slogan again? Um, uh, when, when you say something is going to take longer than it is, you know you can do it a bit faster. Always give yourself that kind of leeway. Um, in answer to your question, I think I fell off a little bit. Well, <laughs> how, what is it like to work with these companies? Yeah. It's, not, it's not as frightening as it seems in the beginning. Um, uh, just be reliable, uh, do, good, do good work, as in try to find examples of what they're asking for. So don't try to do something straight bang out of your imagination because and and also it can help if you ask them 
if they know examples of what they're looking for. Sometimes I've had it where they'll want me to do something and they've given me a script and some samples and some samples of the assets, like the like parts of the illustrations that they want to move. And um, but this is something that happened earlier earlier on in in my in my in my career, I suppose, where like. Um, they would want it to look a certain way, but because I don't know what that is, we're working it out by trial and error and it makes the actual task take longer. So get good at um, not only just contributing to the work that you're doing with them because it's a collaborative effort, but also get good at um, uh, putting ideas forward that help, that help you to both understand what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, that helps too. So all right, you get approached by an agency or directly yeah. or sometimes get directly by the company. One. Yeah. So how do you price up your services? <laughs> All right, so and I used to struggle with that at the very beginning cuz I I for a while I had no idea whether I was pricing too low or too high, but now I've got an idea. So how I price for mine is I work out how much do I need it depends on the job it depends on the client and it depends on it depends on a bunch of things. If you're an animator or a creative in general, you know that it depends on a whole bunch of things. But some of the things I try to bear in mind is how much money do I need to survive in the time that it's going to take me to do it? What what am I going to walk away with? Because if I'm not going to walk away with a lot, then it essentially means that it's just the product. Right. So then after that, I have to think about how can I make it more efficient so that I can uh, get some take home pay. So how I price it now is uh, I try to think about what's the average amount for something like that, who the client is. Um, so like also like who the client is. So the, what Nike ticks is just a tick, right? You can do that for, for anyone, but because it's Nike, it's like they were probably charged a decent amount that would make sense. And obviously they're going to make a lot from that. So even so that's something that I take into consideration. For the same job, I wouldn't charge the same amount to a billion billion pound company that I would an individual who just wants to get their thing made. Um, so that changes it. I mean, there are different, there are loads of different kind of rates for animation in UK and all over the world. Uh, some of the some of them would be like the amount that's actually on offer from the individual or from the company. Sometimes, if it's more like a client or corporate work, then they will charge a day. Um, so I've seen prices per day going from uh, maybe 150 a day to 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 around let's say 230 a day, but also that's in that's in my section of animation, which is 2D animation. So a lot of explaining videos and things like that. If you go to do 3D animation, then you're then that's maybe. What have I seen? That's maybe between 200 to 400 a day. And obviously either a bit less or a bit more depending on where you are and what you're doing and what company you're working with. So, but there's, all, <laughs> there's also other things you can do to change how much you're worth and what kind of pay you're getting. That's, that's where I wanna head to. That's where I'm trying to head to now. Cause at the moment it's, even though it's my passion, I'm still in the realm where it's, it's probably a little bit more my job than it is my actual passion. So what, but what I've done to like duck into the industry quickly is I've, I've, I've tried to make sure I have a broad palette of work, right? So I've gone and practiced a whole bunch of different art styles, a whole bunch of different animation styles, and I enjoy all of them. One way that you can kind of help to dictate how much you get paid is where you place yourself as an animator. And this probably goes for anything you do creative. So the reason why I said that my my stuff is right now kind of more um, a job than it is my passion is because I'm doing things to cater for a market. You've got some animators that they strictly animate stuff in their own style. They don't do anything else. And they can, to some degree, charge what they want. <laughs> because they build their own brand from the kind of work and own their flavor that they have on their own. So in my opinion, that's a, that's a really nice place to be. They're both really nice places to be. But um, so those are just two different ways off the top of my head that you can like use to show, to kind of edge where you're going to go with how much you make. What are the main pressures or worries you face in your line of work? 
Um, main pressures or worries? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, one one that I had at the beginning was uh, not being able to do something that's asked of me. Is but with the internet now, it's really easy to learn stuff, but um, not necessarily easy to learn it. But it's easy to find out what you have to do. And if you can actually do it in the same way that's needed, or you can do it a different way and negotiate that. Um, so pretty much just that, if, if I'm honest. So maybe that, and obviously everyone's afraid of the equipment breaking. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Mine used to always break in, in the summer, like every two years. Every two years in the summer, some shit will break, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's it, nothing much after that. So, Obviously, you're dealing with the animation industry, so you have to deal with a lot of creativity. Now, how do you and how would you advise any potential or future animators? How can they protect their work? Do you have to copyright your work or how do you protect your work from being stolen or taken from you? Yeah, I mean, if it's personal work, then the... the the base for that is just copyright it. It's easy to find copyright services online. You can copyright them for like maybe under a hundred pounds for like five years or 10 years or whatnot. But um, I, I'd say forget about the fact that someone is going to steal your work because it's more than likely someone is going to take inspiration from your work. And that's something you should just learn to enjoy because there's so many people on the planet. It is, it's, if you have work that's good enough or whatever, or there's something exciting or new, different, educative about it, it gets attention, it, it's gonna happen. So I'd say just not even worth thinking about. That kind of thing will leave you disabled if, as a creative person. I'd say for something like that, just forget about it. That's something that prevented me from even sharing a lot of my work for many months. And after a while, I was like, hmm, everyone else is sharing their work. I should be sharing my work, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. So. Who are the major players in the industry? I mean, in terms of animation and illustrators, you know, who do you want aspire to to be on the same level or surpass? Like, yeah. So, uh, I say I don't know about major players, but I have some favorites. I have some personal favorites. One guy is a guy called Wesley Louis, who he's a animator in a UK based uh, animation company called The Line. So they make a lot of, they, they have a broad kind of um, uh, palette of work. Um, I, I modeled my website after theirs in the beginning when I first started because I looked up to them so much. Um, they do a lot of good work, that's one. Another uh, a studio that I really like is one called Studio Buck, but they're in uh, New York. They make some good work as well. They did, huh. If you if you get time, one piece by them you should check out is they did the anim the animated opening for uh, what was it called again? It was a DVD by David Blaine, but it's 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 cool. It's sick. It's sick. it looks good. So, what sort of software uh, would you say uh, would you advise actually a young animator that's trying to get his feet into this um, industry? And what would you advise somebody that's probably done it for about five years and now is trying to um, professionalize their work now to to grab an established company like Bentley or Chelsea or NatWest? Um, what software? It depends how you want to animate and how you want it to look. There's so much, there's like so much animation software out there. Personally, the ones I use is obviously TV Paint and After Effects predominantly for animation. Photoshop is for illustration and Illustrator is for Illustrator. There's other like softwares out there that you can find. Just give it a Google because it's uh, a search in Google because it's really easy to find them now. When I first started, I felt like I had no idea where to look and I was trying to animate with Sony Vegas, <laughs> which is not even animation software. Um, but now there's loads. I mean, like you can get Toon Boom where they use that to like do things like Rick and Morty or The Simpsons. Um, Maya is a 3D animation software that like Pixar used. They used it for, for like a bunch of films. And they even, you can even use software to do, software that's used for one type of animation. You can do it, you can use it to do a different type of animation. Maya is for 3D, but South Park use it to make South Park just because it's easier. So um, you will have to do your own research and find what works for you. 
because obviously if you if you were to tell someone to use a 3d software to do 2d it wouldn't make sense but if you knew why then yeah so it depends on your style do a bit of research there's a lot of information out there now on the internet you'll definitely find something that will work for you but i i'm trying to move to tv paint exclusively because that's some of the best software for like frame by traditional frame by frame animation and they use it for a lot of like anime and sakuga in general but um uh but you have to pay for tv paint like you have to pay for all of the software but for this specifically you get a dongle that you can't lose so if you lose that you have to buy it again <laughs> but it's a good piece of software that's my favorite for that but there's loads out there do your research and you'll find what works for you yeah are there many black animators or illustrators out there there's loads there's absolutely loads i don't i don't come across a lot in my own small bubble of the world um but there's absolutely loads i mean well where else better to look than instagram <laughs> you find anything and everything on there so i'd say um and you know what luckily for me for whatever reason i didn't when i started i didn't have um there was nothing in my head that made me think that I would would or should have any kind of difficulty because of my my color. I didn't experience any racism in animation or anything funky like that. Um, but definitely, if you want to find um, black creatives for inspiration, Instagram, I recommend. That's been my go to. I've really loved it. Uh, yeah. So what are the plans for your company formidable season? Um, oh, sorry. West Louis be one again um plans for my company so uh, i'd say at the moment it's not a company but it looks like one which is what's helped me to get work because i operate like a company but i'm an individual my plans for it in general is that i just want to continue doing good work for clients making a bit of money saving up um and then go back into creating my own stories uh because i uh, just stories that I've had for years and characters I've got a whole bunch like like this thick of like papers and stuff but I haven't actually put anything out there because of uh, just whenever I start I know how much time it takes for me to do it but then I get a job that I need to com completely commit to and I feel like I I haven't recently been able to do the hours I need for the work and then do the same for my own passion because there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm interested in, in having a life. So I just haven't spent that amount of time at the desk. But um, uh, gradually I'm going to, or no, gradually I'm finding a way to chunk that and other reasons to do it. So like collaboration and things like that. Uh, so uh, in answer to your question, what were my plans for it? Um, uh, so to create some episodes for some stories that I have and the short animated film. So, <laughs> and even for that animated film, like, um, uh, I, I chunked it the other, the other week I did some, I did like a, a kind of, a, a like a case study for myself. So a film I kind of compare it to in my head is nothing like it, but I had to compare it to something is the dark Knight. So one thing that I did was I watched the whole of the dark Knight and, used the counter to take note of like all of the beats that were in it. So like the amount of times the scene changes and how long they were each for. This kind of helped me to work out how long mine would be. Um, so so that particular animated film, which I, I, I'm not going to talk about now, but um, that's something that's in my soon to be plans as well. So I'm going to get busy, but right now I'm, it's still more of a job than it is a passion at the moment. If somebody, if an animator cannot draw, can he still be an animator? Yeah, yeah. I mean, animation is just moving image or just anything that moves. So if, and furthermore, if you can't draw or you think you can't draw, either try to get good at drawing to a level that you're comfortable with or just animate the way you draw. There's so many people who animate with such a simple or underdeveloped style and it looks brilliant. You just have to have the patience to draw enough times that it mimics movement in some way, shape or form. And you don't even need to draw. You could do stop motion as well, which is moving items around and taking uh, photographs of it each time and then playing that in a sequence. That's another form of animation. You don't have to draw for that at all. 
Um, you could do digital animation, which means you don't have to draw at all again. Um, so that would be you can illustrate in Illustrator. Illustrator is more like the images you create are kind of done in a more technical sense than a a kind of uh, a, a kind of skill, not skill in a kind of a um, in a kind of feeling sense. It can it can be very mathematic. So that not being able to draw doesn't stop you from being an animator. Just find a way to do it or find something that makes you enjoy it enough that you want to learn how to draw in the way that will facilitate what you want to animate. So it's cool. Okay. It's no limits. Um, so still within the same um, area of learning and education, would you say that for somebody that's trying to get into the industry as an animator, would they desp would they, do they have to go to university or they don't need to anymore? Uh, you don't need to, in my opinion. Um, it will help if you go to a university that's completely unable to be dedicated to what it is you're looking for at the time. Um, I think I could have been fine if I didn't go to university. One of the biggest things that I learned at going to university for me at the time was knowing what to Google. I know it's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot because at the time I had no idea what these TV shows were made for, were made with. I had no idea. So for me, that was the biggest takeaway for me is really not at all. And that's why I say I think I could have been fine not, not going to university. And especially now in this day and age, it's even more true now in this day and age with with what we have, like the internet, there's so much information out there. Sometimes depending on your field, what you're gonna learn is gonna be obsolete by the time you finish. So you don't need to, no. How do you invest your money currently or plan to invest your money? And what I mean by that is, do you invest your money in equipment or, you know, in other assets so that allows you more time to stay creative how, how, how do you go about that uh, so I'd say one thing that really helps is and I know it's, it's corny but invest in yourself but not just invest in yourself like buying equipment or stuff like that because you need equipment anyway you can't do it without equipment one but two try try to eat right try to eat right sleep right drink well all this kind of stuff because it all just um, contributes to how well you can you can be happy and be and focus, remain concentrated, process information, all of this stuff. So the reason I say that as well is I've had times where I get involved in a passion project, either for myself or for a client, and then I don't know. I just went so ham with it. I I'd work on it from when I went when I woke up to when I went to sleep, and then few breaks in between, drink coffee, stay up all night, I'm thinking I'm a beast, and then realizing, oh, wow, I'm making bad mistakes. <laughs> I'm making loads of mistakes because I'm not processing stuff properly. So you need to sleep and you need to eat well and stuff, innit? So don't think you're sick because you're not sleeping because it, it, can, it, can, it, can, it can be disadvantageous. Mm -hmm. So invest in yourself that way. That's one thing that I do now. I take a lot, um, a lot more care of my sleep, my eating and stuff. Um, uh, investing in the in the shares market now I haven't looked into it too much with animation um, but some ways I suppose animation could be involved in something like that maybe is with um, video game companies so I know recently uh, well I heard recently Nvidia was doing well um, and just in general when new consoles come out naturally there will be a little bit of a boost with the company and whatnot um and also things like disney so i'm trying to link this to animation but also things like that so while we've got what's going on people are spending more time inside things to do with entertainment in that in that sense would be doing well um going off topic but um yeah re i've reinvested myself that way and for equipment i only kind of get what i need i get what i need at the time and then i just use that until it stops working completely and then i'll move on to the next thing unless there's a huge change in it um i do i have thought about having a look at some animation courses though because obviously the I, what i did in university went from 2d in the first year to 3d by the end of it and i don't do 3d animation so sometimes i wonder hmm if I were to do 2D animation now, with the kind of information that's floating around now and taught in a different way, could there be new things? 
So that's definitely something to look for as well. But I'd say, sorry to <laughs> to be going on, but I'd say um, uh, for anyone watching who's interested in animation and you want to find, uh, and you want to do courses on animation that are offered online and stuff, mm, once, okay, so one thing that I see in a lot of courses is they teach, they start off, and maybe for the most part, by teaching the basic fundamentals of animation, stuff like squ squash and stretch and timing and all this stuff. Those are things you can find on YouTube. Try to find the things in courses that are not already on YouTube because what I've seen a lot is there are a lot of courses by individuals that are things that you can Google and things that you can YouTube as well. So um, if you are going to do that for like courses in animation, then try and try and single that out, that helps. In terms of popular style of animation, which one would you say is the most popular one, but which one will get you more work with these established companies? Um, the most popular one, what will get you more work? In my opinion, just be good at whatever it is you're doing and you should be okay. So there are people that even their styles are not that, um, not that, um, um, uh, and not that uh, not that polished but because they have an identity with it it does not matter at all because they've done enough work that looks good and it has a point to it it, it doesn't matter at all i mean um there are some styles that are better for some some um smaller industries and in animation that, than others uh, but again it depends on it depends on what the trend is so for example like um mm, Mm, you will rarely see no not you will rarely but you you're more likely to see like um illustrated animation that's like nice shapes and colors to explain the concept of a company over whiteboard animation which is something that's usually or i've seen it i've seen whiteboard animation used mostly to tell a lot of information so whiteboard animation is when someone is drawing the whole the whole um, the concept on a whiteboard using using metaphors and scenes, characters, and a lot of uh, words and different color markers and all this stuff, but um, that might not work for for something that needs characters to be moving and doing things. So then that would be a different type of animation. It all depends. It's like how long is a piece of string. And how can people get in contact with you? Um, easiest way or. Easiest way to get in contact with me is just my email address. So that that's on my site. It's it's just contact at formidableseason.com. Uh, yeah, my Instagram's there as well. My phone number's there, which I might might take down now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's how to that's how to reach me. I'll I'll get back when I can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you have you ever considered like doing a course yourself, like, teaching animation? I have, um, um, I have, but I haven't planned it. So I haven't written stuff down even for fun, not even with, with the intention of doing a course, but I have thought about it. One thing that I would really enjoy trying to um, teach people is how to animate with, with not only just necessarily with your own style, but the way that you think and the way your imagination works because everyone's imagination with stuff isn't the same. Um, so it's like, it's like trying to do something with your muscle memory. I suppose it would be the same if you, this is a weird metaphor, but it'd be the same as if like you got a, a basketball coach who would teach you how to use your body. So I would say I, I, that's something that I would look forward to doing if I was going to teach animation. So I thought about it, but I haven't planned, I haven't made any plans to do it. But yeah. Is there, can you really make a living out of being an animator when you're starting? Because you may, I guess when you're starting, there's probably parents or friends or anyone within your circle that's going to be saying, nah, you can't do that. You know, you, you, you know, they just won't believe in you. So can you get in the industry and start making a living or do you have to go through a bit of hardship and then get to the yeah. part? I'd say if when you're first starting out, you have to, you have to work, you have to work with what matches not only just your reputation based on the work you have to show. That's, that was my experience, but also what you can, what you, what you are able to do there and then for that job, because not all jobs are the same. 
Um, in, in my opinion and a little bit of experience, I don't think that there is a, I don't think that there is a limit for how much you can make in creative work. You can choose to do nothing else and work on that and just work on, no, have no social life. <laughs> have no social life, don't go outside, all that stuff, and just find jobs, complete them, bang them out, and you can make a lot of money in a short space of time. That is the beauty of being a freelancer, and that's probably with anything else. It doesn't even need to be creative. Just just to touch on being a freelancer, self-employed, is that what you mean? Yeah. Is, what's the, the, the pros and cons of being employed with someone and being self-employed? So the pros and cons of that, uh, in my experience, is if you're if you're employed by 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 a company or whatever, um, um, I, I guess you would get the you would get a wage. You would get an actual like London living wage. That's already predetermined. If you're freelancing, then you can you would get a freelancer's wage, which is predominantly higher. Or it, could be a, a a cost for the job that you could negotiate, and then you can work out how that works well for you, ethically for you and uh, and the client or or individual. But um, uh, if you're freelancing, the the job isn't always there, so you either have to look for it, or you have to be contacted. And sometimes on some sites or whatever, you have to you have to um, you have to pitch for it uh, against other. Um, creatives as well but when you're working at a place then the, obviously you've got the stability there so I suppose they're both very 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 good if you want to trade a little bit of um, income for some structure in your life then it's definitely good to work for a place if you want to trade some structure and take take responsibility of your own time and your own management and stuff like that and have the opportunity to make a lot more in a short amount of time then uh, freelancing is the, the way to go. Are there any things that you would have changed or done differently to sort of get to where you are? Maybe things or... that I would have done differently. Um, what would I have done differently? I can't say that I would have done this differently, but I would have liked to see what would have happened if instead of me uh, making a broad spectrum of work and animation to get loads of jobs and get all of these huge clients, if I had just stuck to my own style and my own muscle memory and my own what I'm interested in in animating the things that I animate, how successful could I have been? Because I know that that would have also worked out. Um, it's just that that's, that's the less safe way to do things. Completely just go dead on for your dream and do exactly what you want because you get whatever you want when you do it for long enough. And then things start to fall into place. So that's probably the that's that's probably the only thing that I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about. If I if I if I just did that, man might have been able to charge a bit more still and still do the only thing that I want to do. But it's still good. Everything still worked out fine, and I I still able to do that. So it would have been that. If you have to summarize with three words. What advice would you give to any up-and-coming animator right now? Summarise with three words. Um, it's not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because if you go in thinking, oh, this is going to be hard, uh, then you're going to treat it like it's difficult. Just think, oh, okay, it's not difficult. Let me just find out how it's done. Find examples of it. Practice. Practice long enough. Practice again. Cool. It's not difficult. That's what I would say.